everyone, welcome to another Procreate tutorial. This is the drawing that we will be completing in today's video. If you are new here, I mainly post Procreate tutorials, so if that is something you are interested in, go ahead and subscribe. Otherwise, before we get started, the only thing that you will need to do is download the color palette. I have it linked in the description below. It's totally free to download. Just open up the file that downloads and it'll automatically pop into Procreate so that you can use the same colors as you follow along with the video today. I will put the canvas dimensions, color profile, and layers needed on the screen here so that you can use those to get your canvas set up. So take a minute to get everything ready and then come back and we will get started. Okay, this is our color palette. Lots of fun colors today. So we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. The first thing that we'll do is set our background color. So we will go to our layer menu, click on this background color layer, and select the first color on the first row, this light purple, to set that as our background color. Next, we'll just go ahead and draw our water, which is just going to be a big rectangle. So we will do that on layer one here. We will grab the second color on the top row, grab the selection tool, set it to rectangle with color fill turned on and I'm just going to start in the bottom left outside of my canvas and I'm just going to draw up and over covering maybe the bottom third of our canvas with this rectangle and then let it go to fill it in that will be our water next we will draw our hills in the background so we are going to add a new layer on our layer menu drag it below our water layer so right in there, grab the third color on the top row. And we are going to use our monoline brush for this under the calligraphy tab. I am going to have mine set to just 50 to 60%. And I am going to start on the left side here, a little ways above my water. And just make a nice wavy hill line going off the right side of the screen, like so. It kind of got higher on the right side, that's okay. We don't want it to be anything too perfect. And then I will go ahead and fill that in below it. Go to our layer menu, add a new layer above this one, still below our water layer. Grab the fourth color on the top row now. Same brush, same size and everything. And I'm going to again start on the right side now, a little above my previous hill that we just drew. And then this time I will kind of swoop it down to meet the right side of my canvas again and then fill in below it. So now you should have two hills, something like this. So I just kind of draw really fast to get some nice smooth curves. So do it a few times if you need to, to get them how you like. And then we will go ahead and move on. And we are going to jump straight into our flamingo. We need to kind of get that going before we can do much else. So we are first going to draw its legs and then its body and head. So starting with the legs. So let's add a new layer above all of our layers on our layer menu. Grab the first color on the second row. Same monoline brush, but I'm going to increase the size to 100%. And the first thing that I'm going to do is draw the uh, standing leg which is just going to be a straight up and down vertical line. So I'm just going to start, you know, uh, about halfway through my water, draw a straight line going up, hold it down till it turns into a perfectly straight line and then touch my finger on the screen to make it perfectly vertical. I won't go too far above my water. We need a lot of room for our body and neck and everything else. So maybe just about this long and then let it go. And then on the same layer, I'm going to go over from this just a little bit to the left. And I'm going to draw another straight line going out this way. Hold it down. No touching your finger to the screen or anything. But just create a nice little angle. And just barely like above my water or just on the top of my water line right here is where I'll stop it. And then starting at that point, I will make another line going kind of across hold it down also at a slight angle not like horizontal or anything a slight angle downwards extending into the water on the right side here and then let that go as well so those are our two legs 
The main thing here is that the monoline brush made kind of a rounded edge here on the bottom of my leg that's going into the water and I don't want that. So I'm going to go to my eraser, make sure I have it set to something solid like this monoline brush again for my eraser. And I am just going to quickly kind of erase like a straight line at the bottom of my leg there like so. So it looks like it could be disappearing into the water there. Just make sure that you're somewhere close to like the center of your water. So if you need to kind of move your legs around, you can do so. But we want to be kind of in the center of the screen from left to right. If you want to, you can grab the arrow tool. Make sure that snapping is turned on in the bottom left. And you can drag your legs around until you see this vertical yellow line that shows that you're directly in the center of the canvas from left to right. And now we will go ahead and start drawing our body. So our flamingo is essentially going to have uh, kind of three sections to its body. There's going to be a darker pink, a medium pink, and a lighter pink, all making up the feathers and stuff. The medium pink in the middle is going to be the one that extends into the head. We'll do our backmost darkest one first. So we will go to our layer menu, add a new layer above our legs. Grab the third color on the second row. Same monoline brush. I will drop the size down to maybe 50%. So I'm just going to draw a circle-ish, oval-ish shape like so. Hold it down until it snaps into a perfect shape and then let it go and then click edit shape at the top so that we can move it around and adjust it. But I'm going to essentially have it just cut off the top of my legs here so that my legs are sinking into my body. And they're kind of in the middle of this whole oval here. So right where my legs are is where this like middle dot is on the bottom. And then it's kind of ovalish, but it's close to a circle. It's just a little bit wider from left to right than from top to bottom. So something just about like this. And then let's go ahead and fill that in. I feel like my oval is a little bit too big because we still need a lot of room for its head and everything. So I'm going to click the arrow tool, set it to uniform and downsize it a good amount and then recenter it on the top of my legs here. But now we are going to add some feathers to it. So the feathers are going to go off the left side here and the head will be on the right side when we get to it. So right kind of off of its butt back here, I am just going to draw a straight line going out and down a little bit. Hold that down. Not too, too far out, but just something about right here. And then from this point, I am just going to make some curved lines going back in towards the body and then I'm going to fill that in. Start out and up a little further from this point, right about here. Make another straight line going back in towards the body, connecting nicely at the top here. We'll cover up some of this up here so you can kind of leave it looking however it is. And then I'm going to again kind of make some curved lines back in, meeting at the top of our other little feather area there, like so, filling that in. So that is kind of our first little set of feathers. On this same layer with the same color, we are also going to make the little tops of the legs. So we're just going to draw a little oval shape here, hold it down right on the top of our leg, kind of, and then click edit shape and adjust it. And it's just going to kind of stick out a partial oval connecting our leg to our body. And the oval is kind of following the same direction as our leg here sticking out like so and then go ahead and fill in that little spot that's open. And then we'll do the same thing on this other leg here, another oval, this time pretty straight up and down since this leg is straight up and down. Again, with just a little bit poking out and then go ahead and fill it in. Okay, so now we will move on to our middle flamingo part. So we will go to our layer menu, add a new layer above this one, grab the fourth color on the second row, the next pink color, so we are first going to make another oval shape, hold it down. When it snaps to a perfect shape, go ahead and click edit shape at the top and we'll make some adjustments. So I wanted to essentially kind of almost follow the same shape as we had before. So I'm going to drag it down so that it covers up that the back area by my legs and it just kind of meets really nicely right on top of my legs there. And then I also want it to go above the back so it really covers that nicely as well. And then same on the front. So it just kind of covers all my edges all the way around and then stops right here where our other one stopped before we made our feathers. Go ahead and fill that in. 
Click the selection tool, set it to freehand, and turn off color fill. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right in the bottom left area here outside my outside my new oval, just kind of right about here, make a dot, go inside my circle almost towards the middle of the new oval, maybe a little bit lower than the middle, make another dot, and then I'm going to go up and to the left outside of my circle, make another dot, and then connect it back to my original without cutting through the new oval. So we select kind of a whole little slice on the left side of the oval here. Click the arrow tool and drag it off the screen. And now we'll use our brush again. And I am just going to make some feathers here. So I'm just going to kind of increase the curve up a little bit further right here. And then I am going to make some feathery shapes going back to the middle here, like so. Fill that in. Same thing on the top. So I'm going to start from the middle here again and just kind of draw some feathers going out towards my other one, going up a little bit higher into the sky, and then we'll kind of curve back, maybe do a few more feathers on the top even until we can connect nicely with our shape. So then let's go ahead and fill in what we have. So now we're kind of left with two separate feathery layers like so. And then the difference on this layer is we are now going to add the head and neck to it. And this is all going to be on the same medium pink layer. So the first thing that we're going to do is draw the head and then we will connect to it. So we're going to add the head up here somewhere and then have a nice long neck connecting it. If you don't have enough room, you might need to move some stuff around. You can, you can move your whole bird down. You can lower the water in the hills. Maybe those got up a little bit too high. We want a good amount of room to work with up here. So in order to do this though, same color, same monoline brush, and I am going to again draw another very small oval straight up from the side of my body here. Draw another small oval, hold it down, click edit shape if I need to adjust it, and I just want it to be slightly tilted like upwards to the right, like it's almost looking up into the sky, but nothing crazy, nothing like this, just a very slight upwards tilt, and then a nice good little oval again a little bit wider left to right than top to bottom like so and then go ahead and fill that in then we are going to start on the back left side here the back of his head and we're going to just again we're going to draw quickly like we did with the hills but essentially we want the neck to come down and then loop around to the back like this kind of smooth that out a little bit and then a little bit to the right of that on his head, we'll go over and we'll make the next one, which will connect to the body like this, but a lot smoother. <laughs> so we'll do that again. And you can even work in like increments, like this is a good start, but it's not quite perfect. I'm going to turn my canvas, that usually helps me. And then I'll just kind of smoothly go from the body and then connect to this first line that I drew to make a nice smooth line there. So just take your time, make sure everything's nice and smooth. The only thing that's not is right here where it connects to the head in a sharper line on the right side. But then everything else should be pretty smooth. So take your time to do so. Okay, on the same layer, the last thing that we're gonna do with this color is make its foot. So the one foot that we can see here hanging above the water. So at the end of this like crooked line here, I am just going to draw a curved line down, a curved line back up, a curved line down, and then a curved line back. Essentially like a two-pronged little foot there. Again, take your time to kind of smooth it out, like so. Okay, and now we'll move on to our lightest pink and the last layer of feathers. So let's add a new layer on our layer menu, grab the fifth color on the second row, same monoline brush, and the first thing that we're going to do is make a very nice curved line going off of its back so that we have a very nice curved line here at the top. So I'm going to start a little bit inside its body right by the neck here, and I'm going to make a curved line going up and out towards the top, 
not going out as far on this left side where my next layer of feathers is, not quite as far as that. So right about here, kind of hovering in the air there. We'll let it go, click edit shape if you want to make any adjustments. Mine looks pretty good though. And then I'm going to start on the end here and again, make some little feather shapes going back in towards the middle. And then I'm going to start at the end and again, make some little feather shapes going back in towards the middle, maybe stopping about right here. And then maybe I'll make one big long one to connect to my first one like this to close the shape and then go ahead and fill that in. Again, make some adjustments. I might have just one nice long one kind of going off the tip here at kind of a point. Otherwise, I will leave that as is. Okay, and then in order to have it kind of blend more nicely with our bottom color here beneath it, we are going to grab our eraser tool and we are going to open up the menu and set it to the soft brush under the airbrushing category. We're going to drop the size pretty far to just like 5%. And we are just going to very, very lightly follow this right side of the wing to kind of erase it very gradually so that it just kind of blends right into our darker pink below it. So just right on the right side there until we get into our wing pattern or until we get into our feather pattern there like so. Okay, now we'll just start adding some details to our flamingo. So the first thing that we're going to do is add some shadows underneath the wings. So in order to do that, we are going to go to our layer menu. So we'll start by adding a shadow underneath the medium pink wings. So we'll add a layer right in between these two. So right above our darkest pink layer, add a layer there, click on it, turn it to a clipping mask so that we don't draw anything outside of this dark pink layer. Click on the end on this layer and drag it to multiply. And then we are going to grab the last color on the second. It is the eighth one in line. And we are going to switch our brush now to the soft airbrush under the airbrushing category. We are going to have this set to about 30% and I am just going to zoom in and I'm going to very lightly add a shadow all under, all along the edges of my medium pink color in the middle. So right where all these feathers are, I'm just going to kind of follow the shape of them to create a nice little shadow right underneath them all the way around wherever it's showing above our dark pink color in the back. So just like that. We're going to do the same thing now for the next one. So add a new layer above our medium pink layer, right below our lightest pink layer. Click on it and set it to a clipping mask. Click the end on this layer and drag it up to multiply. Same brush, same size, same color. And we're just going to do the same thing. I'm going to start on the left side here and just follow it all the way down until we get about to where we started our erasing. So we don't want to draw a big shadow right here. We want to stop it right, right where we started our erasing there. So stop it right about there, but all the way across following the shape of our feathers again to create a nice little shadow there like that. Okay, next we're going to add some more details. So we will do that on top of all of our layers. So just add a brand new layer right at the top Switch back to our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. Set the size to maybe 30%. And we are just going to make some little feather details. Grab the sixth color on the second row, this darkest pink. So it's a little bit darker than our darkest pink in the back here. So we are just going to add some little tiny curved lines that kind of curve downwards, just in this open area that we can see like so. So I did about five of them. Okay, same layer we're going to do all this on, but now we're going to draw them on this medium pink layer. And the color that we're going to use is this cut the main color of our darkest pink little feather layer that we drew in the back. So that was this third color on the second row. So switch to that and then we'll draw a few more of these little curvy feather lines. Some on this bottom area as well. Just towards the back here, nothing too far up front. We'll add some other stuff there. 
and then again our lightest pink layer now we'll use this medium pink color to draw our lines with so that is this fourth color on the second row so switch to that and we will draw our little feather lines like so now we're going to add a few quick highlight lines to our bird as well so we are going to grab the seventh color on the second row same monoline brush same size and i'm first going to draw a few just on the very tippy top of its wing kind of following the shape of its wing on the top like so do it a few times if you need to to kind of get them right I'm just kind of doing some various lines and then we'll also do some on the front side of the neck area again kind of just sporadically following the shape of his neck like so so just a few there and then a couple on the top of his head really quick as well just real quick ones up there on the same layer we are going to draw our spindly little lines on his legs to make them look spindly so we are going to grab the second color on the second row same monoline brush let's drop the size to maybe 15 percent and we are just going to zoom in down here and i am just going to draw some essentially horizontal lines to whatever you know direction this part of his leg is going going slightly outside of the leg on each side as I draw them. So then we'll kind of turn and draw them this way for this part of the leg, just trying to space them out about evenly. When you get to where they meet, you can decide, I think I'll decide that this one is in front. So I am going to draw one right here to kind of show that. And then we'll continue on to the end. And then I'll do the same thing on this one. These will all just be, you know, pretty horizontal since this one is just straight up and down. And then I'll stop where that one is in front and continue on below it till we get to the bottom, right where it cuts off into the water. So that is the detail on the legs. So the last thing that we need to add to our bird is just its um, eyes and its beak. And then we will move on. So we are going to first add the eye area on its face. So it has like a lighter kind of cream colored eye area where its eyeball will go. So to do that, we are going to go find our middle pink layer that has its head on it. Click on that layer, set it to alpha lock, and we are going to draw directly on this layer now. Grab the first color on the last row, same monoline brush, I have it still at about 15%. So I am just going to start on the side of its face here and draw an oval shape, hold it down, click the edit shape button if you need to and just make any adjustments. So we want the oval to just kind of cover the whole little front part of his face here. We don't want it too far up or too far down, just going kind of straight off of its face in the same direction that your head kind of ended up looking. And then we want the back of it to just be right around the middle of his head somewhere. Kind of like this. Not too thick, so adjust the thickness of it if you need to. So something about right here. And then go ahead and fill in that space on the front of his head. Mine left a little gap, so I'm just going to go in and use my brush to kind of fill that in the rest of the way. Now we will switch to the third color on the last row. This will be its eyeball color, so we are just going to, in the middle of this area here, make a perfect circle, hold it down, touch your finger to the screen to make it a perfect circle, let it go, click edit shape to move it around if you need to, and then go ahead and fill it in. Make sure there's no gap in your color there, and that is its eyeball. While we are here with this on this layer with alpha lock turned on, we are going to create just a tiny shadow underneath its head where its neck is. We will grab the third color on the second row to do so. So again, monoline brush at about 15%. I am just going to start on the bottom of it, the middle of its head here, kind of swoop up into the neck and then swoop it down, kind of creating just a little crease here of shadow, like so. 
So do that really quick and then that completes all of that. The last thing that we'll do is add our beak. So we will go to our layer menu, add a new layer, drag it below our body layer, this middle pink one. When I dragged it below, it set it to a clipping mask automatically. We don't want that. So click on it and turn off clipping mask. Grab the second color on the last row. And we are going to start right where these two colors meet on the top, the pink and the cream color on the side of our face. And we are going to start right there. Make a big curved line like so. Going down over here, hold it down. Click edit shape if you need to, if you wanna make any adjustments. Mine got a little bit too big, maybe not quite that big, but we want a nice curve to it. Click your pen tool again, and then starting at the tip here, we are going to draw another curved line going back to kind of meet at the bottom of this other, at the bottom side of this creamy area here. Again, click edit shape if you need to make any adjustments. I kind of want mine to be a little bit more curved, but still meet up there like so. And then go ahead and click your pen tool again, make a line to connect these two on this side so that we can fill it in. And now it should look something like this. If you want to make any other adjustments, you can. Mine's a little bit too like upwards, I feel like. So I'm going to grab the arrow tool and just tilt it down just a little bit and just kind of reline it up here like so, about like that. I'll zoom in and just make sure that there's no gaps or anything. Perfect. Okay, so now I am going to go to my layer menu on this beak layer here, click on it and set it to alpha lock. Grab the third color on the last row, the black color, and we are just going to start a little bit from the tip and make a line and then just fill the rest of that in with this dark color, like so. And then lastly, we will add a small shadow to the beak here. So we'll go to our layer menu, add a new layer above our beak layer, click on it, set it to a clipping mask. Click the N on this layer and drag it up to multiply. Grab the last color on the second row. And same monoline brush. I am just going to zoom in here and just draw a line following the same shape of the beak, essentially, right on the very bottom part to add just a little bit of a shadow there. Okay, so that is it for our flamingo. That whole part is done. That's obviously the longest part of our picture now. Now we're gonna add some details to the water. We'll add the sun to the sky and then we'll add the greenery in front. I am going to go back to my water layer here and I'm going to add a new layer above it. I am going to grab the last color on the top row. It's seventh in line, this really light kind of greenish color. And I am going to use my monoline brush for this. My brush is still at about 15%. I am going to essentially make a few oval lines around my leg in the middle to kind of show that my flamingo is standing in the water and made kind of some ripples there. And I am just going to start making some ovals right around its feet. So the top of the oval is behind the leg and the bottom of the oval is in front of the leg, like so. I'm just going to make them a varying sizes and they don't have to be too perfect. Like they don't have to all even be in like the same direction. They can kind of be a little off kilter sometimes. Maybe I'll make a really small one here. And maybe I'll make one last one here. So I ended up with like four of them like so. Then I'm going to grab my eraser tool. I'm going to set my eraser, open up the menu, and set it to the soft airbrush under the airbrushing category. I have the size at about 15%, and I'm just going to zoom in here, and I'm just going to erase some little sections of each of the lines, and then they kind of it kind of fades in, so each like ripple is kind of fading in and out. I'll do like different areas for each of them. So I'll erase really hard right in the middle of my eraser area and then lighter as I get towards the edges so that it kind of fades. I'll maybe make some bigger ones on these bigger, on these bigger ovals. Just kind of all the way around doing varying little sections. The outer ones I might make more on just because they're kind of further away. They might have more fading out 
than the center ones, but we still will add a little bit to these as well. Something about like this. Next, we will still be on the same layer. and We're just gonna add a little bit more to our water here. So I'm just gonna add some kind of straight lines in the water here to add some highlights and shadows with my monoline brush, but in order to make them perfectly horizontal without having to hold down my pen and touch my finger to the screen each time, we are going to turn on the 2D grid assisted drawing feature. So let's go to our gear icon. Under canvas, click to turn on the drawing guide. Click edit drawing guide and we are already on our 2D grid, but I do just wanna turn on assisted drawing and I am going to decrease the thickness so that I can't see the grid quite as much or even potentially not at all. I'll leave it just barely showing here like so. No need to mess with the grid size or anything else. And then go ahead and click done. Go to our layer menu, make sure that this layer that we're on now that has our ripples on it says assisted. If it does not, click on it and turn on drawing assist so that we can use the 2D grid feature. So we are first going to grab the fifth color on the top row. It's a little bit lighter than our original watercolor is. Monoline brush and we are going to set the size to about 50%. And we are just going to go through and add some straight horizontal lines. As soon as you start drawing, it'll just catch on and go perfectly horizontal. We'll have some go off the edge, just in kind of varying lengths. Like so. And then we're going to grab the sixth color on the top row, a little bit darker, and add some of those as well throughout. Not really going into our ripples at all, just kind of around them, like so, until we have it nice and filled out. And that will be it for our water. So next we're going to add the sun in the sky. So we are going to turn off the 2D grid. So go back to our gear icon and just click to turn off the drawing guide so that we don't have to look at that anymore. We are going to add the sun and it is going to be behind all of our layers except for our background color layer, obviously. So add a new layer and just drag it all the way to the bottom. You might or might not run into going behind your hills. So that's why we want it to be on the bottom. So I'm going to grab the fifth color on the last row, the bright white color. Same monoline brush at like 50% right now. And we will draw a circle in the sky, hold it down, touch your finger to the screen to make it a perfect circle. We wanna leave some room around it for some rays. So I'm gonna make mine about this big. And then you can click edit shape if you want to drag it around. I'm going to place mine right here, just behind my flamingo in the sky. But again, leaving some good room all the way around it for some ripples of sunshine and then go ahead and fill it in. Now let's go to our layer menu, add a new layer above this one, and we are now going to draw our ripples. So same monoline brush. I might drop the size of my brush to 40%, and I am just going to draw some more circles around my circle. But this time, instead of having them kind of varying like this one down here, we're going to make them all more perfect. So draw a circle shape, hold it your pen down, touch your finger to the screen to make it a perfect circle and then click edit shape and we are going to drag it until it's roughly centered with our previous circle. So it should have about the same space all the way around. So just get it as close as you can, resize it if necessary. So for my first one, I will do it about right here and place it nicely there. Then I will grab my brush tool and let's do another one. Again, circular shape, hold it down, touch your finger to the screen to make it a perfect circle and then click edit shape and we will adjust it to line it up nicely all the way around. Brush tool again and I will do one last one here. Hold it down, touch my finger to the screen, click edit shape and drag it around. So mine kind of goes off the top of the screen here, that's totally okay. Again, like I said, that's why we're behind the hills. Yours might be behind one of your hills right now even and that is totally fine. I am just doing three. If you want to do more, you can. But now I'm going to grab my eraser tool again on the soft airbrush, same, same size, about 15%. And I'm just going to go through and again, 
erase little sections of each of them. Again, probably the outer section I will erase more of. And again, just dragging my brush lightly on the edges to kind of blend it out and make it look more just like it's fading. something about like that for my son and that is that step done now so the last thing that we're going to do is add the greenery in front so it's essentially like we're looking past the greenery to see our flamingo back here chilling in his pond so let's go to our layer menu and we are going to add this on top of all of our layers so a new layer right at the top so we're going to have two layers of grass and then one layer of like vines hanging down. So let's start with our first grass layer, which is going to be the darker green. So it's going to be the sixth color on the last row. Same monoline brush at let's do 20%. So this top layer again, and I am just going to start making some big old grass blades. So I'm going to try to avoid, avoid my flamingo for the most part. So I'll just kind of start next to his foot over here, but I'm just going to make a slightly curved line from the top to the bottom. Start at the same point on the top and draw another slightly curved line to the bottom, getting wider and then fill it in. And then I'll just kind of do those in varying little patterns, some bigger, some smaller. I'll even have some kind of going off the side here. Nothing like too, you know, horizontal, but just kind of going up the side here, just a teeny tiny bit like so. And then, like I said, I'll kind of just maybe leave a little bit of a space and then start again. So that is my first layer of grass and then we'll do we'll go to our layer menu and we'll add a new layer we'll grab the seventh color on the last row the lighter green and we'll do another layer of grass in front of this one and so same thing just kind of vary your shapes and sizes as you go kind of leave some spaces here and there but try to fill in a good amount of space that you didn't fill in before but also do some layering like so Okay, so that's it for our grass. You might wanna go through and just make sure that all of your shapes are 
filled in nicely. Sometimes it might leave a little gap at the very top where your point where your points connected. So just go ahead and go through and fill everything in. Maybe sharpen up the tips of your blades by just like drawing one nice point at the end. I'll do the same thing for my dark one because I didn't do that before. do our vines so let's go to our layer menu add a new layer above all of our layers grab the darker green again the sixth one on the last row same monoline brush at 20 percent and i'm going to start in the upper right corner here and i am just going to draw a curved line like this hold it down draw another one right next to it hold it down and this will be the width of my vine so adjust it as you see fit and then i'm going to fill it in and then off of this vine, I am going to draw some leaves by just drawing some curved lines that connect at a point and then connect to my main vine here. Like so. Maybe we'll just see the tip of this one. Okay, and that will be my first vine. And then on the same layer here, I'll go to the other side and I will do two since there's more space over here. So I'll first make my curved lines, hold them down, and fill in in between them. So this will be my first one, and then I'll make the other one maybe like longer, like this, kind of crossing my first one. And then fill it in as well. And then I'll add some leaves to them as well. So again, just kind of take your time to do them however you would like. This is what I ended up with for my little foliage in front. If you want to make any adjustments, you can. I think my grass is a little too short, so I'm going to go to my layer menu and grab both of my grass layers. So I'll slide, I'll select one of them, slide right on the other to select the other one as well. I'll click the arrow tool, set it to free form, and I'm just going to drag this up a little bit so they're just a little bit taller and fill in a little bit more room. Even touching my legs is fine. We're pretty close to it, so I think that looks a little bit better. So make any adjustments that you would like to to finish out your picture. Otherwise, that is it for our drawing today. So I hope you had fun. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more tutorials from me in the future. If you would like to share your drawing on Instagram, I would love to see it. So go ahead and post it and then tag me so that I can check it out. While you're there, go ahead and give me a follow so that you can see what I'm working on next. Thanks for watching.